we have ourselves a very good update I think we should go over right here. This is the Red Wings, and this is Steve Eiserman's team, and we have ourselves a piece on MLive.com published by Ansar Khan that goes over what Steve Eiserman's philosophy is going to be heading into the trade deadline. So let's go over, read this piece. The article is right here. Steve Eiserman, Red Wings to exercise patience at the trade deadline and in free agency. As always, the link will be in the description below. Eiserman pretty much indicated that where the team is in the standings on the March 21st trade deadline will determine what decisions they make. Regardless, I don't see us really being aggressive at the trade deadline, he said. In free agency, I'll take the same approach. If there's a player that can help us and might be with us in a few years and be a contributor in a few years, we'll try to spend our money and be aggressive when we think it's appropriate. Nothing has really changed on the aspect of what we're trying to do. We're going to stick with it and try to be patient and ultimately just try to make good decisions, whether it be short-term contracts or long-term contracts. Now, the article then goes over into a piece that goes over who the team has on the UFA side of things, who might be moving on from Detroit, either in a trade-like scenario because, hey, trade deadline rentals, or just in the offseason in general, guys like Letty, Stahl, DeKaiser, Stetcher, Nemestikov, Gagne, Carter, Rowney. Only a couple might draw interest, however. Eiserman also said this when it comes to the timeline of how everything falls in place. To be honest with you, I don't really have a timeline. We're just trying to improve each year. We're trying to use the draft and hopefully draft well and definitely use the draft to increase our prospect pool. My goodness, talk about using the draft. His words, not mine. It's too predictable to tell when some of these players are going to be ready, whether it's year one or year two or three years from the draft or even five years later. Things haven't changed. Well, because it's Detroit we're talking about here, we know nobody's going to be ready year one. It's Detroit. They never play guys immediately out of their draft teams. It's always, at the very least, three or four years, if not two, in a very special circumstance like Lucas Raymond. Speaking about that Lucas Raymond, he says this, We have moved in not only Lucas Raymond and Sider, but Rasmussen's playing a bigger role, Valeno is starting to get an increased role, Zadina, Hironik, we're moving more young players into our lineup, and we're going to continue with that plan for the time being. Now, that's it. That's the update. That is the quote from Eiserman that is published in this article right here, and we can just end the video off right now, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go over some of the guys that Eiserman highlights in this little spiel as to who's doing well, who's on the team, who has been brought in and been played in a bigger role, and we're also going to talk about some of these guys that are indeed expiring and who might see themselves on different NHL teams either after the trade deadline or next season in general. So, when it comes to the younger guys, obviously you do have that Lucas Raymond. He's got 30 points in 38 games right now. What is there to say? I mean, everything that can be said about Raymond has been said. His pace, while it's no longer a point per game, he is quite significantly under that, it's still very gosh darn good for a teenager. And for a guy who has come out here, done all the things like, okay, he's breaking Iserman records, he's tying Gordie Howe records, he's coming in here as the first teenager, pretty much, since Larkin to play for the team, and he's coming in as the first teenager since Iserman himself to be this good on the team. Moritz Sider, of course, is here as well, 24 points, 38 games played. How gosh darn good has Moritz Sider been? Top defenseman on the team in points, and it's only his first year as well. I think it's really difficult to hammer home the point verbally just how good Moritz Sider has been and how much of a fresh breath of air he is for the Red Wings. He's just so confident and he's so skilled that you watch the crazy things he does on the ice and it's like, okay, he's hanging out behind his own net motioning to the four checker on the opposite team hey come get me and he's like using his hand like you know how you do to a dog hey come here and you pull your hand towards you he does that in overtime he does a crazy spinorama pass that goes right through the neutral zone tape to tape under the guy he's looking for he has so much pizzazz to his game and it's so great because we don't really see this level of confidence and skill alongside of that confidence at this young of an age let alone at all? I mean, there are some players, I guess, that do have those capabilities. Of course, the Macars, of course, the Foxes on Colorado and New York, but like, Cider's only 20 years old, so there's definitely a level of comprehension there that exists that other players do not have. 
You then have, of course, the guy who was right behind him in point production. It is Philip Hironik, who was going out there doing his thing, having a season as he always has. We're expected to seeing Hironik go out there and take a little bit less of a role than he has previously because he finally has defensive help on that right side in the form of Moritz Sider. He's signed till 2024, $4.4 million, so he's going to be sticking around here for a while. And then you have the other guys as well. Iserman mentioned Michael Rasmussen, and Rasmussen coming in here with 12 points, 36 games played, is... Let's just say a little bit better than he has been in the past. I mean, he did have himself a full season back in 2018-19, but I don't want to go out there and say that he was all too useful, nor was he all too comfortable in that role. This season, of course, the production is the best that it's ever been, but that's not really what we care about. We want to care about this guy in a way that says, okay, is he developing properly? Is he actually using the time on the Red Wings and becoming a better player because of it? And honestly... The way that Jeff Blaschel has started using Michael Rasmussen, I'm kind of more inclined to believe that's more likely today than it was a few years ago. A few years ago, it was just kind of up in the air whether or not Rasmussen's development was actually going in a positive direction, but I mean, he's here, he's doing his thing, and he can stick around, which is not bad in the slightest. You also have Joe Valeno, who is on this team. He's got himself a pretty good stat line as well. He's got four points in 22 games played. So, no, I'm kind of joking about the stat line. But, hey, at the very least, he's in here. He's only 22 years old, so he's got himself a long time coming. And for a Red Wings team that is probably going to need some good depth centers down the line, Joe Valeno, you know, exceptional status, first overall QMJHL draft, all that stuff that we had with Valeno back in the past. While he may not be a Connor McDavid, he may not be a Connor Bedard or a Shane Wright. He is still a pretty okay hockey player that was taken at the end of the first round in 2018. So there you go, Red Wings fans. You have yourselves your guy. Now on to the cap friendly page here of the Red Wings, taking a look at who might be on other squads this season and this offseason. Because if we take a look at this team and we project them towards not being a playoff team, let's say for the sake of argument, they fall out of the playoffs. It's a lot easier to have these conversations over here, because when it comes to the trade candidates, I mean, the biggest one that comes to mind is Nick Letty. Everybody's talking about this guy being a good trade rental situation for other teams that are in the playoff hunt, but you do have some other players who are expiring as well that might also be involved in those kinds of conversations. Mark Stahl is going to be a free agent, and we'll see whether or not he finally gets himself off the Red Wings. Danny DeKaiser is over here too, although I'm not really too sure any team is going to go out there and want to get this guy. He's got a modified no-trade clause as well. You have yourselves Zadina and Gagne. Zadina, RFA, you're going to have to re-sign this guy. Sam Gagne is in the system, and to be honest, I like Sam Gagne a lot. The guy's out there with 13 points in 38 games this season, and as a guy who is a Vancouver Canucks fan first and Red Wings fan third, just seeing Sam Gagne ever since his days in 20, what was it, 2018, 2017, when he was on Vancouver like that, and seeing him go to Detroit, do his thing, be a mentor for the young guys, it's been a very nice career trajectory here for Sam Gagne. I want to say it's a comfortable trajectory over there. So if any team is going to go out there and say, okay, we need a depth forward, a guy who can suit up in the bottom of our lineup, he's not really going to be too important, but he's going to be there, probably provide a leadership presence as well. Sam Gagne could be your guy, and he's only going to be here for this season. He's making $850,000. He expires at the end of the season. So there you go. We also have Thomas Grice, whom I don't know what the future holds in store for because, I mean, $3.6 million, 35 years old. He's definitely the prime profile to be trade material, but I like Grice a lot, and I think a lot of Red Wings fans do too. It's just at what point do you start to say, okay, now we're going to entrust the entire team over to Nedeljkovic and just get whoever backup is there to play a very small amount of the games heading into the long-term future. There's a conversation to be had about goaltending. Obviously, the guys in the IR, Carter Rowney, Troy Stetcher, Riley Barber, Mitchell Stevens are all expiring as well. I like Troy Stetcher. I want to see this guy come back to Vancouver in some capacity, but that's something that I think Jim Benning might have ruined for everybody over here. So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about the Red Wings and their plan over here? The trade plan, the prospect plan, the development plan. 
Iserman lays it out all on the line in this article. Link will be in the description, of course. Who do you want the Red Wings to trade away? Do you even think that's possible? Because, hey, they're taking things one day at a time. And if their team is actually in the playoffs by the time the trade deadline comes around, then why would you want to go out there and trade away some of these players? Is it really as circumstantial as it seems? Or do you want to head into the trade deadline with the same mindset you have today? Okay, this team is not that good, or this team is that good. We're keeping these guys around, or we're trading away a lot of these guys. Talk to me in the comments on your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.